Hey folks, Tim Miller here. Wow, what a week, huh? <laughs> if you're like me, I am uh, thankful, tired, and really appreciative that my phone's not blowing up every other uh, minute with another candidate asking for money. But hey, shout out to all you all who got out and voted and exercised your constitutional right to shape your government. And uh, I know that many, um, some maybe on this channel, uh, don't agree with uh, how the elections went, uh, given that we're divided and we really are um, not in a position as a nation, which is very concerning to talk to each other and to share our concerns, our beliefs. Um, and just always remember, folks, good and evil will never stop until the Lord comes back and sets everything straight. Evil's going to be on the march. By the way, many of you have said, hey, Tim, what's going on? Why is it so quiet? Let me assure you, it's not going to stay quiet for long. There's a battle ahead, folks. Um, it's There's a spiritual battle. There's also a physical battle. And we need to be on our game. We need to be thinking about, you know, kind of what's going on and how um, the enemy is likely to start um, attacking the enemies of our country, attacking some very special, you know, things that could hurt us in a big way, one of them being the power grid. And while the election was going on, this story kind of came sneaking up on us. And I wanted to talk to you about it because it's really kind of scary. Folks, a coordinated uh, terrorist attack on our power grid could have amazingly damaging things uh, or consequences. And, and I think we really have to be very thankful that it hasn't happened yet and yet very wise in, in, in preparing for it to happen. So let me share this with you. Uh, this was obviously pu published from Fox News, Nashville Power Grid Bomb. A plot it was really spearheaded, <laughs> I like this article, by what they're saying is a, a baby face thug. This is the guy, uh, he's 24 years old, Skylar Robert Philippi. Uh, folks, he's got some deranged uh, thinking. He's a white supremacist. Um, he, he is a young man looking for purpose in life. And his purpose, unfortunately, would be to destroy our life to where the world as he sees it could come to fruition. And so apparently he's an, and, and you can see there, an accelerationist, which literally means he thinks people can do things that cause such damage that, uh, you know, people will begin to rise up, institutions fall, governments change, and that's the motivation behind it all. And remember, folks, this guy is not working alone. If you look at this picture, Many of the devices that they're holding in their hand are very simple devices that, unfortunately, many learn how to make on the Internet. But here's the deal with this one. They were going to target via a drone a power grid in Nashville. Now, this that's huge because that's not just one uh, location. It's a series of distribution centers where if if you think about it, it could knock out a lot of power to a lot of people for a while. And that was the focus. Uh, folks, remember that it wasn't too long ago as we scroll through this that we saw attacks on our power grid. Uh, some in the wet on the West Coast, some in North Carolina. I think in the one in North Carolina, there were 30 to 40,000 people that didn't have power for a sustained period of time simply because someone shot into them. Well, this was a much more coordinated thought process. They were actually going to uh, use explosives, permanently damage the grid. And as you can imagine, folks, that's a game changer. And good news for us is the FBI did make the arrest and it's gotten publicity, which, you know, it's interesting to me. We don't always see that from the FBI anymore. Um, an example being the Iranian plot to kill former President Trump wasn't covered a lot. Really amazing to me that those kinds of plots wouldn't be front page for the American people. 
but I digress. So here, here's the good news. This, this guy is in, uh, in federal custody for plotting a terrorist attack. Um, the FBI did a great job. There's the affidavit. I will put that in the link below uh, for you to actually see the criminal complaint. Folks, it, it's a little bit scary. Not a little bit. It's a lot scary how this young man thought he could make a difference in this world. And, you know, I got to tell you um, that that's exceptionally concerning to me because that ideology is so toxic and it spreads so easy. So, folks, the reality is, is what we've been talking about kind of played out. If this had been successful, this would have been a big deal. And what it shows you and I is that the evil that is, you know, fostering and uh, planning and, and all those things that, that those plots are ongoing. Now, having worked at Homeland Security for a season and having run out a lot of those leads at the time uh, in concert with the FBI, I will tell you that oftentimes these leads don't pan out, but sometimes they do. Now, in this case, uh, the FBI was fortunate because they had an informant. He was able to kind of say, hey, here, here's what's going on. The agents were able to identify him and arrest him. So they thwarted it. And that's the win, folks. We don't want these attacks happening and then we're successful in investigating them. We want them not happening because we've got a good intelligence community. By the way, you're going to see a lot of changes in the structure of the FBI, I think, when uh, President Trump takes office. The, this is a big focus uh, for the Republican Party is to really look at the checks and balances in place for the FBI. And quite frankly, you've heard me on national media for the Secret Service. The Secret Service has one primary function, and that's to protect the leaders of our nation so that we can have that discourse, that civil discourse. And it's not under the conditions of threat of death and like you see in third world countries. So I think we're, we're moving in a, in a good direction where there will be accountability. Now let's talk about power outages. I don't want this to be an overly long video. I just want you to think through it with me because folks, we don't think of power outages as being a big deal because normally a thunderstorm knocks it out. Maybe it's a few hours. Maybe it's a day we're back up and running. But what if it was a longer term and what if it was a much broader area affected? That's a big deal. And if you think about that, that causes ripple effects um, that are big time problematic uh, for a lot of folks, especially for average folks that need to survive. And remember, in densely populated areas, wow, even a brief outage can cause problems. But in a, a, you know, a city environment, if you don't have access to critical things, which we've talked about at nausea, uh, food, water, um, shelter that is actually functional and the ability to protect those things. I always say four things. Um, and really, you got to think through each one. Okay, food, what do I do? How do I deal with this? Remember also that if you're running a business and don't have power, the economic impact, but also the potential exposure to crime and to vandalism and uh, e even the weather. I mean, pipes bursting in your business. That's a big problem. And unfortunately, we don't really think about those things because uh, we've got a you know stable power grid in, in our country. I'm going to tell you, folks, you do not have a stable power grid in the United States. You have a functioning one, but it is not stable. And if you start striking strategic points in that power grid, mass and sometimes long power outages will occur. And so you think about the average things that you do every day, you know, you go to Starbucks or, you know, you go down to the bank, get a little money out, you ride the Metro or you, you know, you run a store. Folks, everything about what I just said is going to be affected if in fact we have a power outage that's substantial. So and if you think about it too, in a even in a minor power outage in an urban environment, you get problems because that means 911 systems may be down. It means there's not a police response um, that's timely. It means you could have a lot of problems with looting. And folks, that's one of the things that breaks my heart about where we are as a country. 
We have allowed people coming in from Venezuelan gangs. I could talk all day about, you know, some of the terrorist threats that we've seen based on folks coming into the U.S., um, on and on and on. Here's the point. Whereas we used to be able to depend on each other as American citizens, we care for our neighbors, and we still do. I'm always advocating that you do that. There are some folks in our country that hate you and I. They hate our country, and they're here to destroy it. Well, what does that mean? Oh, do we live in fear? No, we're just wise and prepared. I like the saying that if you don't stand for something, you fall for everything. Well, folks, the days of not standing, I hope and pray that this is the takeaway for all of us. Those days are gone. We are going to stand for what we believe in. We're going to vote. We're going to go to school board meetings. We're not going to allow the evil that has been championed to continue. We're going to take back the values that ha have made our country great. And obviously that starts with a foundational faith. I know some of you may not have a faith and that's great. I love America because you don't have to have a faith here. You don't have a state run church. What you do have is the freedom to worship however you want. Now, I have particular <laughs> ideas about how to do that with the living God that I trust, but uh, that that's a personal choice that you had. So I want you to think about, you know, those going back to those rolling power outages and how, wow, what do we do if it becomes longer term? How do we prepare for that? Um, you know, some of the things that you've traditionally done and because you're thinking of, oh, well, it's a it's a hurricane or it's, you know, maybe even a few weeks or, you know, maybe a tornado or, or, but what if it's longer? What if it's several months? How do you survive? How do you as a family protect yourself against these kinds of uh, things? By the way, they're going to happen. They're going to happen more. And unfortunately, Many of these are going to be man-made. So think about the impact to the transportation industry. If, you know, the power goes out, they can't load the trucks, all those things. So I want you to think about when you're in a major power outage for a sustained period of time. Let's go back to those four things again. Do you have food? You've heard me say it. Uh, my friend Chuck Holton wrote a book on it. We need to have sustainable food for, I always recommend, at least three months. Now, I always recommend Patriot or Wise Food because it's sealed. It's in an easy container you can throw in the car if you need to, and it's good for 30 years. Now, is it the best thing to eat every day for, you know, normal? No, but it's going to sustain you in, a, uh, in an emergency situation. So food and water, water. Wow. What do you do if that filtration plant is shut down because it doesn't have any power? Is that a big deal? That's a huge deal. So let me encourage you. Do you have uh, even simple things like uh, filtration kits that you can use to go camping where you can go to a body of water and, and, and use those filtration kits to clean water there? Now, remember, if you're in the city and this is a sustained period, things are going to get more and more bleak. So you're going to have to think about how you're going to either survive in place or get out of town so that you can have food, water, and what's the third thing? Shelter. If you're in a 10th floor apartment in New York City trying to survive without power, you know that's a fight for your life. Without power and heat, at that high up with the wind and all kinds of challenges, you have problems. So what do you do? How do you plan for that? Is there a place you can go? Is there a capability to stay in your apartment for a season and survive? Remember too, without power, things like elevators, um, things like security systems, electronic doors, all those without, unless there's a backup power, but that's only going to be good for a certain amount of time. That's going to be a big problem. And then we also wonder about health care challenges because um, the health care challenges are going to be significant if you have medication that you need to survive and you don't have a stockpile. Many have said, Tim, what do we do with that? And we just contact your doctor, see how you could get 
a couple months supply. But then also remember, you're tying it back to your plan, and we'll get to that in a second. But remember that if you need emergency uh, treatment or get to a hospital, remember hospitals can be suffering. We saw that in the pandemic even. They were overloaded, overwhelmed, no way to treat people. That's a that's a horrible situation. Remember, too, that ambulances may or may not be able to come. So, again, not through the lens of fear, but how would we what what, what would we do in that case? How do we process what to prepare for? And if you think of even basic medical supplies, um, if there's a violent type of situation, you're going to need basic medical supplies. You know, possibly the stop the bleed kits we talked about with the tourniquets and the pressure bandages. By the way, if you haven't had that training, you need to get it. You need to get CPR training. You need to get stop the bleed training. And I don't care how old you are, you can go to this training, find it, pay for it, and do it. I guarantee you it will pay big dividends if you ever need it. And also remember, folks, that we wouldn't necessarily have uh, communication capability. If the cell towers are impacted, oh, can you imagine society without cell phones? That would be disastrous. Now we are moving into technological advances that would enable things like Starlink, um, you know, to, to kick in in areas that don't have it. Thank God for Elon Musk and his vision to do that. But that's something that um, we should consider. I know some of my friends have gone back to CB radios and shortwave radios because it's reliable. You could still have communications. Remember, too, folks, that if uh, if you lose the ability for your uh, cell phone to work, it's out of power. You lose all the connectivity of those numbers that you had in there. But if the cell towers are down, you even have a greater problem. So alternate communications. Well, what could that be? Well, could be landline, like in the old days. As I said, it could be uh, CB radios. It could be shortwave radios. Think of how you would communicate with critical members of your family to coordinate a response. And remember, folks, um, this may be time. If you live in the city, this may be time to get out of Dodge. You may need to get to a place uh, because communications is going to be difficult. Likely in a situation where there were mass power outages, people are going to start figuring it out and they're going to start trying to get out of town. And that's where even, you know, driving the roads is problematic. And again, if let me go over it again, food, three months, water, you've got to have the ability to sustain yourself. I, I know where we are, we're on city water. So I have those five gallon jugs and we try to fill them up and and have you know if you have 10 of those you have 50 gallons which isn't a ton but it's sustainable water for a limited period until you can get to other things the other thing is remember that cleaning yourself staying sanitary is just huge so having we actually have a a storage closet full of food water you know your basic medical stuff um we also have wet wipes and uh you know uh, bleach is even something good you can you can use if, if you need to. And remember, too, that refrigeration, um, unless you have alternate power, you're not going to have it. So, again, your perishable items can spoil. And, okay, so we talked about food, water, and your shelter, right? That's the sustainable shelter. But let's talk about how you defend all of those things. And we've talked about this on the channel a lot. Folks, you need to have an emergency uh, defense plan for your family, and it needs to start with how do I protect myself in my own home? I, I've had a number of you reach out to me and say, hey, we're going to exercise our Second Amendment right, and never had it before, but we're doing it now, and we're getting training. Awesome. Please. Don't buy the tool unless you're getting the training. Please don't buy the tool unless you're getting the training. Lots of folks have been asking me, well, what kind of tools do I need? And I'm using tools, obviously, for the, the, uh, the reason that of uh, the platform we're on. But the bottom line is, folks, whatever you have, you have to invest in two things. Number one is the, uh, a safe to protect those tools. Please, please, please. Unstored tools um 
cause a lot of problems and a lot of innocent children die every year because people don't do that. But then the second thing is training. So you have to think of investing in the tool, but then, okay, I need a lock compartment safe and then i need to invest in some training to to know how to do it and remember folks as you do that you're going to become more competent and you're going to be the one that knows what to do and people are going to be safer just because you're there remember a lot of folks they focus on how to use the tool they go to ranges and all that stuff uh, but remember, the more important thing is when to use the tool, and we call it judgmental training. So uh, also including what you would do after you had an incident. What do you say? What don't you say? Folks, I'm going to tell you, a lot of people get involved in things they shouldn't, and they pay for it the rest of their life. Some folks are hesitant, don't get engaged, and they lose their life. So this is a skill that you have to have a lot of focused training and uh, keeping uh, abreast of what's going on in terms of the case. So one of the things that I, I really recommend when you're thinking through power outage is, is as you go through that list again, food. Do you have food that will sustain you? Water. How would you get ongoing water? Um, now, some of you may have a well, so that means you can either, you can even get a manual pump, but you also need things like purification uh, tablets. If you live in a single family home, you can do water storage barrels. That's just amazing. Um, so, so food and water is at the top of the list. Without it, you can't go, long, go wrong. And so for backup power, um, if, if you think about it, most folks go to a generator, which I love, but what if you had more long long-term sustainable power like solar. There's some really cool stuff being developed now, portable solar panels that can sustain limited power over time. It's getting better and better. But folks, you can't get those devices after something happens. You got to think about that now. And again, if you're going to go to a, a, a generator, which I love, look at the longer term solutions um, because again, propane and those types of gas things, uh, situations are far more, they don't degrade as quickly. So, and also think about battery backups. How long could battery sustain you? I know many uh, folks, they just go buy a big pack of batteries and, oh, well, you know, we can use that. The, the good news is, is that works for the short term. Bad news is it may not work um, for the long term, but having flashlights and lanterns and those kinds of things, all of you have been in uh, power outages before. That becomes just important. Remember, LED flashlights, too, tend to last a lot longer. Uh, also, the old candles, <laughs> you know, solution, which has been used for centuries, um, remember. Also, remember in the climate that you're in, obviously, if I'm in Florida, I'm not too cold, not too terribly concerned with freezing to death in South Florida. Uh, but if you're in Michigan, and you, again, you need to have things you can pick up and take with you quickly, which goes to your go pack. You need to identify what things do I want to take with me if I have to go. And then remember too, the communication, contacting your emergency contacts, making sure they have a, an idea of where you are and how they might be able to help you if possible. Remember, it, 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 we all need each other. And in this season, wow, do we need each other. And remember too, I, I, I've talked about this at nausea, but I'm going to talk about it real, real quick again. If power breaks down, likely law enforcement response time is going to either extend or go away. They're, they may not even be able to get to you. So that goes back to your home, your home security. And I'm talking about things like your locks, you know, the door frames. Is it, e is it a contractor grade door easily kicked in? Uh, are your windows easily broken and people being able to access? But the biggest thing, folks, for today, please hear me, is the whole idea of connecting with your neighbors. Folks, we are way stronger together. We need each other these days. And so maybe it's just as simple as walking next door or around your complex, introducing yourself. How are you? I'm in here, um, number whatever, or this is my house. And hey, by the way, you know, um, 
you know, with everything going on, would you be interested in just getting together with a group of us? We're just going to talk about, you know, what would we do if there was a natural disaster? A friend of mine was sharing uh, with me, he had serious damage to his home here in South Florida as a result of the tornadoes. But man, he had neighbors who had no homes. They were gone. Now, fortunately, the resources were there to, you know, to help uh, his neighbor and they're on the process. But they went from one day being in their home uh, to the next day not having a home. So we need to think through that. Also, folks, in this season, I always recommend to you, keep your cars always topped off. When I get to the halfway mark, I consider it empty. So I fill it back up again. Under really stressful times, you may want to have some additional gas stored. Uh, it's dangerous to store gas. Let me say that you got to be careful, but having some, um, the ability to, you know, to have extra fuel may be helpful. And also just to kind of uh, reinforce, you know, if you lose your phone, the navigation systems, you may just need old fashioned maps. And for those of us, Old, old enough to remember we that's all we had baby we pulled out those maps from the gas station that were folded and that's how we navigated it but even having a current map in your car uh, in your glove box you can still buy them and man would that be incredibly beneficial if it became a mass situation and don't forget cash is king in the midst of a crisis because at the end of the day you get up to that gas pump and there's no credit card readers no credit card that cash may be the only thing that keeps you going which you need to keep going and then finally folks and i know you've heard me preach this over and over again you have to have skills these days. You can't depend any longer that you're going to dial 911 for a violent emergency or the fire department for a medical emergency. Or you, and they're all, they're going to come screaming like they always have. Now, these are great people that are committed to you, but they may not be able to come. So it's time for us as Americans to start thinking through how do we care for ourselves it goes back to your neighbors. If your neighbor is a nurse, if your neighbor is a doctor, if your neighbor, you know, has construction uh, type background where he could help you reinforce doors or locks or whatever, now is the time. Folks, I can't stress enough. We're going to see challenges in the days ahead. There's no question it's coming. The question is, are we going to be ready? And that goes to your personal family emergency response plan. That starts with a home defense plan, but then it goes to how would we travel? Uh, where would we go for relocation sites? All those things that really, really matter when you need them. And folks, the good news is when you plan, prepare, and train, it's not a big deal. You just do your thing. I've seen so many people that didn't have any of those three and it threw them into incredible panic. And I hope that's not you and I, I, I really do. Hey folks, I, I need to ask you, uh, obviously my videos are getting squashed um, by YouTube. They're not making it out. So if you do me a favor, like, share, subscribe. By the way, your comments, I love them. Uh, thank you for them. Thanks for the encouragement. Also, thank you for just the thoughts. And by the way, if there are videos that you think I need to do, let me know because this is all about you, folks. I, I, I just want to serve. I want to be faithful to do that. And I hope and pray they're helpful. And the only way I know if they're helpful is if you're like sharing and subscribing. And quite frankly, uh, a lot of my subscribers uh, are being unsubscribed. Um, I hope that will change <laughs> days ahead with, with more scrutiny on these platforms, because I believe we all should have a voice as long as it's not you know, a voice um, that, that is advocating for, you know, dangerous things or anything like that. I think we all ought to have the ability to talk to each other, to communicate. We've lost that civility in our country, folks. And I have dear, dear friends, dear friends that don't think like I do. And, you know, they're, they're struggling right now. And I hope and pray that we all can come together. And, and quite frankly, the things that I've shared with you, Every person that you know needs to think about these, not through the lens of fear, but through the lens of wisdom, 
preparation, planning, training. Uh, folks, I've been all over the world. I've been in some of the darkest spots in the world. And I'll tell you, without a plan, without training, without an expectation of what you're going to be up against, it doesn't go well. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, I would love to hear from you again. Thank you, everybody. So many of you are so faithful. I'm very, very grateful. Please continue to pray for us and our team. We're, we're kind of split. We're doing some really cool things, which is why I don't do this as much as I should. Also, should I be doing lives? Um, I know my friend Chuck keeps going, where are you? You ought to be doing a live every day. I'd love to hear from you. So folks, God bless you. Stay safe out there. And we definitely will see you. Remember, like, share, subscribe. Stay safe.